Sometimes in the awake function of a singleton, a coder will check it if there are multiple instances of that object and delete them. Should I also do this for my player object since uh, there should only be one Mario in Super Mario World? Ooh, a question about singletons. You want to take that one, Jason? Start to kick us off? Oh, yeah, this is this is um, an interesting one. So I personally am not a fan of using that pattern specifically for uh, anything that's not a manager. Hmm. So you're right, technically, that there should only be one player in your scene. But the interesting thing about how games work is you often have to cheat. So there's a lot of cases where you'll duplicate a player for the sake of some visual thing or... Um, like there's a very good example in Half-Life 2, I think, uh, no, it wasn't Half-Life. I forgot what game it was. There was some game where, uh, the game didn't have vehicles. So what they did is they made a character stuck a vehicle on its head and place it under the ground. So it was literally a walking player with a vehicle for a head. Cause it was a, it was a, it was a rare case where they only needed this one odd instance. Now that's, that's a silly one, but the point is. Conceptually, that's nothing you ever think about doing, but it works for a problem that they had. A player, to me, is an entity that's active in your scene. And so maybe you'd want some kind of manager class that would deal with that problem. And it only has one instance. But um, I personally don't like to tie uh, that kind of state logic to a single object of any kind that conceivably could have more than one. Um, there's a lot more to it than that in terms of uh, when you're creating those kinds of managers. There's also state. And depending on how you manage your state, if you're not persisting it out of the scene, you can end up thinking you're you're deleting an object and cloning it, but the version you have in the second scene um, is technically slightly different. It like doesn't have a script you've added like when they equip something or uh, there's a status effect in some object. And so when you go to the next scene, uh, it picks not the one you think it will. It'll delete the one you don't want and then keep the one you, you know, whatever else. And you end up with really odd scenarios. Um, so in short, I don't recommend that pattern for that kind of an object. I think I think you should have something that manages state and then instantiate the instantiate a new player if you transition scenes um, and then sort of try to duplicate state between them and have some sort of state manager that may have a singleton awake but not the actual actors themselves. It's 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 interesting too like what he just is describing is a very uh, a use case of a singleton or an implementation of a singleton that is specific to unity. And it the implementation itself is doing stuff that I, I, I come from like what in my day job, I work with a, an MVC framework called grails and it's all like a hundred percent convention over configuration. Meaning that if you follow the convention, uh, then things will happen. A lot of magic happens behind the scenes. Like if you name something, uh, like visitor with a controller, if you put the word controller, then it's it's seen as a controller in the framework. And I don't like those implicit things that create magic because I personally have a really bad memory. So I forget that sort of stuff all the time. Uh, so, and then on another note, some people just don't know. So there, there have been times where developers come on a project and they don't really understand Grails and you're like, well, they're, they're a competent developer, so they should be able to help out. And they do things that they, that they just don't understand. And it's not their fault. It's just that, uh, it, that that particular framework relies so heavily on the convention and doing all these implicit secret things. And I, I think things like having an awake function that deletes, uh, a game object out of the scene like the singleton pattern, I just don't like that sort of implicit stuff because, you know, someone who doesn't know might, like Jason said, <clears throat> try to drag another player in uh, just for a visual effect and all of a sudden the other player gets deleted and you're like, what, what the heck, what's going on here? And then all of a sudden that developer who doesn't understand is chasing down code and even if it only takes them 15 minutes to to track down the particular script, oh, I see here, it's a singleton. I mean, that's 15 minutes lost that didn't need to get lost because he he thought it was a bug or she thought it was a bug and it really wasn't a bug it was a script acting as it was intended but it was doing it in such a secretive and magical way that it's like you he had to track it down and figure it out and i just don't i i don't like things like that personally yeah and another thing too is depending on the complexity of your project people get very stuck on this is a major problem that, that bothers the hell out of me is a lot of people they see an implementation of design pattern and they internalize those lines of code, meaning that design pattern. But the pattern is what a problem it's solving. It's not the literal lines of code you're seeing it physically do. So a good example of this, a singleton, 
that you're picturing is probably public static instance instance equals this or or in, instance equals new, whatever. If it's not a mono behavior, um, but if you're using a dependency injection framework, a singleton is just dot as single or as static or something to that effect, right. because a singleton just means you gate the ability to have more than one instance. In fact, if you're doing a, a C sharp application, say WinForms, you can use something called the mutex. And it makes your application a singleton. It effectively means you cannot load more than one instance of it. And if you ever had a problem, if you've ever, if you've ever opened a project where you wanted to have two instances side by side and the application wouldn't let you and you got very annoyed, that's a very good reason it's why like you sport, don't use singletons. Yeah, you, you, you <laughs> want to let the client do that if that's going to be something that they actually need for what they're doing. Um, so a singleton doesn't necessarily mean you know public static instance. It means making sure this object can only happen once in the in the context of your code. Any get any method of getting this object will always return the same object. That is what a singleton is. Um, the, the singleton instance pattern that you're used to seeing is just one implementation of it. So if the real question is, are singletons bad? No. Uh, can that particular version bite you in the ass? Probably. If you use something like a dependency injection framework, you can actually toggle on the instancing nature of, of an object, and it's not as bad because you can control that at a contextual sort of configuration level. Mm -hmm. But if you're baking singleton-ness into an object, you are forever declaring this is one thing and one thing only. And it may make sense when you write it for the first time, going, there is it's an audio manager, it manages audio, I only need one thing of audio, I'm never going to change it. Well, down the line, you switch platforms to you know, you're using FMOD now or WISE when you weren't before and your previous audio manager was Master Audio and uh, you're thinking, oh, well, I'm just going to switch entirely. I'll make a new audio manager and it uses the new system. Well, some of that stuff doesn't play well. Maybe you've got certain files that um, have to load through Unity because you're doing something with the mixer to do with your footsteps and you don't have a way at the moment of hooking that up correctly through FMOD. Now, FMOD, yes, it can do all of that stuff, but say you're kind of doing a part and parcel, whatever. Long story short, you find yourself in a weird scenario that doesn't make sense where you've got two audio managers. Now, it might be temporary, but you didn't see that coming. So you have to be really damn sure when you're writing this is a singleton that it really is a singleton. And that's why the things that normally take on the role of singleton is something where if two things took that same job, the application would fundamentally break. So a scene manager or an application state manager usually fits for a good singleton because it's not that you couldn't technically have two of them, but it's that if you did have two of them, your game would actually become unstable. It would, it would fundamentally not work the way you expect it to with two of them in it. And if you ever find yourself needing two game managers, you've probably broken something in your code. <laughs> If you're in a situation where you need to have two of the single game state running at once, uh, game instances different, whatever. I don't get really specific on details, but the general <laughs> point is um, a singleton literally is you declaring this can only be one of this thing because if there is more than one, bad things will happen. Um, so TLDR, singletons aren't bad, but they can so often be misused that it's, it's usually shorthand from senior developers to say singletons are bad because understanding what the caveats are about when you should and shouldn't use them are so specific that you're just better off not using them if you're finding yourself in a position where you don't know whether you should or not, you know? Yeah, the, and the answer is so nuanced and it really does take either time to explain it or, or for the person you're explaining to have, to have some experience with some of the pain points of, of singletons. And that's, that's one of the reasons why I haven't even touched it in a video yet. And I've wanted to. And I, I need to because it's such it's such a prevalent thing it seems in the Unity like with Unity uh, developers where the singleton like it always comes up to this day like I always see in forum posts or on on uh, the subreddits I always see people asking about uh, singletons and I don't know yeah it's just one of those things where um, if, like if you think about what your what, what when you would use a singleton typically it's in a situation where um, it's like the easiest fix and you're like, everyone's like, oh wow, it's so easy. I'll just put it in a singleton. And that right there is almost suspect to me. Like if it's so easy, that kind of makes me think maybe why is it so easy and is that okay? I, I don't know. Just, I'm kind of skeptical, skeptical in that way. Yeah. And, and again, I, I keep boiling it down to whenever you're asking the question, should I use a singleton? Don't think about the code itself. Think about what does that statement mean? This mm -hmm. thing in perpetuity will only ever have one of this thing ever then ask yourself do i need that statement to apply truthfully to the thing i'm writing 
it may sound like I'm saying the same thing, but I'm really not. A lot of software architecture, people say, should I use MVC here? Don't say that. Say um, MVC allows me to separate the, the model of my code from the way it's presenting from the thing that controls it. Is that sensible in this case? Is it worth all that architecture to get that separation because I'm likely to change my model or change my presenter or change my controller? So don't think of it as, can I apply this or should I apply this? Ask yourself what it does, what it's for, what the pros and cons of it are, and then do you need those? <laughs> that seems like the same statement. It really, really isn't. 